reasons to verbally cite sources during the presentation of your speech. The first is just to give credit where credit is due. Whenever you use any material from a source, you should tell an audience where it came from. The second one is that it can bolster your own credibility. By giving citations, it shows that you did some research and you examined that research critically and you're prepared to tell us exactly where it came from and how old it is. Your goal when you present information in a speech should be to never have the audience question, where did that information come from? How old is that information? Who published that information? Take a look at these two citations given by students during presentations. If you're anything like me, then you'd be questioning, if astronauts can float in space, then there must be such a thing as zero gravity. Well, according to space.com, technically speaking, gravity does exist everywhere in the universe because it is defined as the force that attracts two bodies to each other. But astronauts in space, in space usually do not feel its effects. According to an article I read, 21 million Americans are still drinking contaminated water. Those citations will have the audience asking questions. We don't want that though. We want to let the audience know where our source material came from. There are three crucial pieces of information that you want to include in any citation and a fourth, which is just as important, but optional. Let's take a look at each one of these. The first piece of information you always want to include in a citation is the author. This could be a person or it could also be a corporate author, like a government agency for example. So it lets the audience know who wrote this material, where did it come from. The second piece of information to always give is the publication title. Where was this information published? This could be a title of a book, a magazine, or an online source. It's important for the audience to know this because different sources have different amounts of credibility. Me publishing something on my personal website isn't as credible as me publishing something in the New York Times or in a refereed journal. And the third piece of crucial information to present is the date. When was the information published? The reason that we do this is so that the audience can hear how recent the information is. And this is especially important when you're presenting statistics. People want to know when were these statistics collected and how old is this information? Now, there are some cases when recency doesn't matter too much. For instance, if you were giving a speech about the history of root beer, you might have used some older sources that talk about something that happened quite a long time ago. But in general, a good rule is the more recent sources are the best sources. Now, the fourth piece of information is optional, but also important if you can find it. And that is, what are the qualifications of your source? Does the person that you're citing have a particular degree in something? If they do, that's important to mention. Where are they employed? That's also important to mention. It's this piece of information that says, not only am I going to tell you where I got my information from, but I'm going to show you why my information is credible. So if I say something like, Dr. Thomas published a study in 2018, that's not as credible as saying Dr. Thomas published a study in 2018. Dr. Thomas has a specialized degree in biology from Penn State University. That added information can go a long way to enhancing your credibility because it shows that you care about the qualifications of your sources. If you have this information in your outline from the start, if you put it in your outline when you first start writing your speech, it's much easier to cite it in your speech when it comes time to perform. Here's something important to remember. It doesn't matter which order you present this information in, as long as you have the three or four pieces of information there. The three mandatory pieces of information, again, are the author, the date, and the publication. The optional piece of information is the source's credibility. So let's take a listen. Here is the source from my speech. And I can present this in several different ways. It doesn't matter as long as those pieces of information are there. I could say this just the same way that it's written in my outline. All of the diet information I gave you came from Dr. Jerry Skinner, who is a veterinarian that specializes in rabbit care and is the author of the website, The Rabbit Doctors, which was updated in 2018. I could also mix the order of those things up and it doesn't matter. All of the information I just gave you about diet 
came from Dr. Jerry Skinner and was published in the year 2018. Dr. Skinner is a veterinarian who specializes in rabbit care. He runs a website called The Rabbit Doctors. See, this is important to remember because when you're practicing your speech, don't feel pressured to memorize the exact order of the citation. Just remember to get all of those pieces of information in. So I can say Dr. Jerry Skinner first, or I can say the Rabbit Doctor's website first, or I can say the year first. It doesn't matter. Whatever comes out naturally and is conversational for you during your speech will work just fine. Remember the citations that we watched students give earlier. Let's watch them again and see them doing it the right way. If you're anything like me, then you'd be wondering if astronauts can float in space, then there must be such a thing as zero gravity. Well, you might be surprised at what you might learn. According to Elizabeth Howell, who has a PhD in aerospace science from space.com in 2015, quotes, technically speaking, gravity does exist everywhere in the universe because it is defined as the force that attracts two bodies to each other, but astronauts in space usually do not feel its effects. According to an article written in 2018 by Laura Hamers, of Science News Magazine, 21 million Americans are still drinking contaminated water according to the EPA. Now, of course, we do have the technology to fix such thing, but smaller communities and financially strapped communities like Flint, Michigan can't afford to upgrade their pipes. There are two questions I frequently get from students asking about source citations during a speech, and that is, should I cite the exact date or should I just cite the year? The answer is just cite the year. The exact date isn't that important to people who are listening to your speech. You might have the exact date in your APA or MLA citation in your outline, but you don't need to give the exact date during your speech. Just the year will be fine. And second, they ask, if my source is a magazine, I usually put in the citation the page numbers from that source. Should I cite that during my speech the answer again is no, that's not important as long as you give the date and the publication. If an audience member is really interested and wants to look something up, they can ask you about it after the speech and get more specific information. So knowing these things makes giving citations in your speech pretty easy. Just give the author, the date, and the publication, and possibly some credibility information. It doesn't matter what order you present these things in, and you don't have to give specific things like dates and page numbers. Giving citations in your speech will enhance your credibility with the audience, and that's the number one reason to mention these things as you go along.